Good morning. I'm Jackie Stevens from Grace Fellowship Baptist Church in Meridian, Mississippi, and I teach the adult Sunday school class. We're in a series of lessons that correspond with Advent, and today, the uh, Sunday before Christmas, is love. We would light the candle of love. Our scripture today is Isaiah 9, 2 through 7, and Matthew 1, 18 through 25. I'm sure many of you are familiar with these scriptures, but let me share those with you. Isaiah 9, 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nations, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood, shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and his name is Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Then Matthew 1, 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph and before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named Jesus. Now, I'm sure many of you probably still get some Christmas cards, but in our days of text and Instagram and Facebook, Many of us don't really go to that trouble because we've shared things throughout the year if we take advantage of social media. Others of us religiously get our cards ready, maybe write a little note on it. In the early 80s, when the postage system decided to raise the cost of stamps, I pretty much decided I wasn't going to send any cards. But we still got cards from some of our Navy friends who included a letter and shared events of the year. Now, most of the time, I will have to say that this was the good things in their life. Rarely would they tell you they'd had trouble with a son or daughter or that they had lost a parent or they, uh, they were, themselves were ill. Most of the time, it was good news. So we got the positive side of things. Now, in the Gospels, it's really interesting that Mark and John have no Christmas letter. They do not have any indication 
there was uh, an eventful birth, although they speak of Jesus often. However, Matthew and Luke do. Now, Luke is the story most of us really prefer because they're singing and there's happy people and it's just really a wonderful version of the Christmas story. Matthew, however, is a little darker. His story involves uh, fear, uh, persecution, harassment, fleeing. So we see here a totally different Christmas story. And I want you to remember that Matthew mainly wrote his book as a result of prophecy. He wanted to show that Jesus was the object of prophecy in the Old Testament. So we find that uh, Matthew really is a darker side of the Christmas story. And um, that many of the dreams that were involved in this darker version would affect the life of Jesus in many ways. First, we find that Joseph had a dream about taking Mary as his wife. Now, this really put a kink in the plans of Mary and Joseph, the fact that she was pregnant by the Holy Spirit. And I can just hear her trying to explain that to Joseph, and most of you probably wouldn't have believed it. But Joseph had a dream, and in that dream, the angel told him that he would, it would be okay to take Mary as his wife because the baby was of the Holy Spirit. Um, so then we find that there are other dreams that take place here. We scholars believe that after the birth of Jesus, Mary and Joseph were perhaps in Bethlehem for several years. And when the Magi appear, because when the star appeared, they began moving in that direction. Uh, Matthew's gospel involves an angel telling Joseph uh, about the pregnancy, but he also is telling the Magi to go home another way that the king is evil and that he only wants to destroy the baby. Uh, Joseph has another dream that tells him to take Mary and Joseph, Mary and Jesus and flee to Egypt. And we know that they stayed there until the king had died. And then Joseph has a final dream where he is told to leave Egypt and take his family back to Israel. Now we know that all of these are events where God was leading Joseph and the Magi to protect the child that was so important. Luke's version of Jesus' birth, however, is a wonderful Hallmark movie, and Matthew's version, not so much. Uh, we find that life for all of us is seasoned, seasoned with fear, uncertainty, and the desire to run away from certain people and situations. So we find many times that we are, are beset by problems and um, we have to remember that there are scripture that can encourage us. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which means... God with us. Uh, have you ever thought about, after reading our scripture in Isaiah today, what would have happened to the Jewish uh, nation had they really accepted Jesus' birth? If they had been, if the leaders, both in religion and in the secular world at that time, then there was a Jewish portion of that had really taken these words to heart. I can remember still singing many of the ver verses of various Christmas programs that included the words Wonderful Counselor and so forth, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Matthew saw Jesus as the fulfillment of these promises 
And Jesus was the one that Israel had been anticipating for centuries. Actually, the people who welcomed and believed him were people who, for the most part, who had no power, who were not leaders in the religious circles. So we find that they do not recognize the Messiah. Um, in his book, The Third Peacock, Robert Capon makes the distinction between two kinds of help. I found this thought really very interesting. There are two kinds of help. One is mechanical and one is personal. Uh, mechanical help changes and fixes things. In other words, heals a disease, repairs a car, covers a debt. Um, these would be things that we would consider mechanical help. And for the most part, when we pray, these are probably the things that we pray for. But there's also personal help. And I want to share an example from my own life about this. When we were stationed in California, which was the early 80s, I had my dream job in an unusual school that was called uh, Back to Basics. And I taught a sixth grade class and I loved my students. And one day my principal walked in and said, well, I have some news you probably don't want to hear. And I said, well, what would that be? And he said, the state of California is not real happy with your license. And uh, you have two choices. You can go back to school this summer and take three senior level courses, math, English, history, and I'm just about to fall out of my chair. Or you can take an exam. Well, I said something like, well, that's a no-brainer, even though I was not a good test taker. So I had, oh, I don't know, half a school year probably to prepare for this, and I had worked myself into a pretty good tizzy over all of this. And one night we went to church, and the youth were having a musical program. Uh, I don't remember the name of it. I don't remember the song that gave me such peace, anything about it. But as the young people began to sing that song, I knew that God could come to me. He could provide me peace. I could start worry, stop worrying about the test. I still had to prepare for it, but I had the ability to prepare for it. And yes, I did pass the test. Those are examples of turning our life or letting go of all of our worries and our concerns and let God enter us with this personal help. Uh, if we think of this story, let's just think about things that happened from the birth to the resurrection of Christ. Uh, he was born in a cattle stable. Uh, he had magi who brought him incredible gifts. He had to escape a cruel king. His father was wise. His earthly father was wise and took him to Egypt. He started his public ministry at about the age of 30. He was despised and rejected, and most of his friends were unsavory characters. His disciples eventually deserted him in his hour of need. And he was crucified by an evil state. He rose again on the third day and he ascended into heaven. Through all of this, Jesus was beloved by God. And this was part of God's plan. Jesus always knew what his mission was. Uh, the presence of God in all that happened to him supported him and undergirded him. Even for us, life can be hard sometimes. We have all been through a year that we could never, ever have imagined. And we now see some hope in a vaccine. 
All of this, can you imagine, has just been an unbelievable journey for 2020. However, we know that God is there for our personal help. I hope you have enjoyed our lesson today, and I wish you a Merry Christmas. Jesus stayed faithful to God all the way to the end. Life for us can be hard. We can face many things uh, and many ideas that things don't go as planned. 